Now, I want you to turn with me, please, to the Word of God tonight, and we're taking our Scripture reading from the Old Testament book of Exodus, please. And we're in Exodus this evening, chapter 12. The Old Testament book of Exodus, and we're in chapter 12, and I want you to come with me, please. We'll begin reading at verse number 1. The world, the world talks about big nights. You hear them talking about having a big night next Saturday night. We're out during a big night last night, and there's many a big night in my life in my unsaved days. Big nights. Nights of drinking. Nights are reveling. Nights act need you. Big nights. And God's going to take us tonight to a big night. A big night that we find here in Exodus chapter 12. A night for many to remember. And we're commencing to read it, verse 1, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let them, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. And your lamb shall be without blemish a meal of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. And ye shall keep it until, up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house, houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat it not raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the Puritans thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon your houses, where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Verse 21, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel, and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that, it, that is in the basin, and strike the lintels and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he saith the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. In verse 29, And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne 
unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts this evening that reading of his own precious truth. What a night it was when there was not a house where there was not one dead. What a night it was. What a dark night. You know what's so sad tonight? So very sad when people refuse to heed the warnings, when people will not listen, when people will not take on board the warnings that are given to them, even those warnings are for their good. It's so sad and it's so tragic that people will not heed the warnings. It was after the death of Alex Hurricane Higgins when Jimmy White, his fellow snooker player and friend, was being interviewed asking about the great people's champion. And Jimmy White said many times he made me angry. And the reason why he made me angry because he wouldn't listen to us. We tried to help him. We tried to show him where he was going wrong. And he would listen to nobody. How many people tonight are like Alex Higgins? They just won't listen. How many people are like George Best? George Best who was dying, but he got a chance. He got a chance that a lot of people didn't yet. He got the new liver. He was given a new chance. He was warned. He was told to stay off the drink. Ah, but old Bestie wouldn't listen, friends. He wouldn't listen. And that's what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 17. Be not thou much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die? Before thy time. You see, the Bible in Proverbs 1 and verse 7 has this to say. It says, fools. Fools despise wisdom. Fools despise instruction. Fools, friend. Do you know when it comes to spiritual matters tonight, it's the very same thing. People won't listen. People won't heed the warnings. In fact, the Bible tells us again in the book of Proverbs, fools, it says, they make a mock at sin. Do you know what that verse means? Fools make a mock at sin. This is what it means. Fools make a mock at sin at the amendment for sin. What does that mean? Fools mock the need of repentance. Fools mock at the need of getting saved. Fools mock tonight at the very thought of coming to Christ. Fools mock at sin. And I hope you don't mock, sir. And I hope you don't mock, dear. It's only fools that mock at sin tonight and only fools that mock at those who are saved. You remember what the Bible says tonight, be not deceived, God is not mocked. It's better to die a fool 
in the eyes of the world and to die a fool in the eyes of God. Tonight, God brings us to a very dark night. It's going to be the night of all nights as far as the land of Egypt is concerned. A night that is going to mean death. A night that's going to mean death, dear. And a night that's going to mean deliverance. This big night in the land of Egypt, it's going to mean death for some, and it's going to mean deliverance for another. And it's all down to one thing, the blood of the Lamb. I want you to notice, first of all, concerning this big night tonight, there's the punishment solemnly declared. God said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt, and I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The punishment solemnly declared, because this great night, big night in Egypt, Death and destruction was on the way. But that's a warning this evening, and it's mingled with mercy. And you say to me, George, mingle with mercy. What do you mean mingle with mercy? I'll tell you how it was mingled with mercy. God said this night, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And when God said he was going to pass through the land of Egypt this night, do you know what God was doing? Them? God was being merciful to give them time to get saved. God was giving them time to make preparation. Do you remember Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, the rich farmer? Do you remember him? What did God say to him? He says, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. At least God gave him a few hours to think about it. God was giving that young man time. He says, This night thy soul shall be required of thee. I want you to see the mercy in that tonight because God was giving them a few hours to get saved. God was giving them a few hours tonight. Do you know something tonight? Ten times the Lord warned Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, ten times Pharaoh saw the terrible things that God done. You know, sometimes, dear unsaved friend, God has to do terrible things to awaken us. And ten times God done terrible things to warn Pharaoh. Ten times he warned him. Ten times he spoke to him. Ten times he revealed himself to him. Many times has the Lord talked to you, sir. Many times has the Lord warned you, love. I'm telling you, the Lord has given some of his years, and you're still not saved. 
night after night, week after week, month after month, year after year, and still, you're still in your sin. Seven times the Lord warned Judas. Seven times he warned him. One of you, one of you, is going to betray me. That was the first warning. Here's the last warning. Better if that man had never been born. And he said to Judas, whatever you do, do it quick. And you'll read in John's gospel, and Judas went out, and it was night. And that night he, I'll tell you, eternal light never dawned on his doomed and damned and darkened soul from that night to this. Many times, dear friend, has the Lord warned you. Many times has the Lord showed himself to you. Four times we're reading scripture. Today, if ye hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The promise solemnly declared. I want you to notice, secondly, tonight, the plan simply detailed. The plan simply detailed. The plan was a lamb had to be taken. And not only was a lamb to be taken, but the lamb had to be spotless. And not only had the lamb to be spotless, the lamb had to be slain. If they were going to escape death, if they were going to escape destruction this night, Another had to die. Another had to die. And you know, friends, what more harmless of an animal can you get than a lamb? Innocent, innocent lamb. And had to come into the house, you know, and brought it into the house. It had to be separated away from the other goats and sheep. And the wee lamb was brought into the house, you know. And I often think about this because, you see, if I had been there that night, I would have fell in love with the lamb. It, me going over to the lamb and cuddling it and cooing at it and it bleating at me. You know, I would have been no use of a farmer, you know. Because I wouldn't let my lambs go to the abattoir. Can you imagine this night, the children and all loving the lamb and cuddling round the lamb and all, and the lamb bleating away? And then there came the fourth night, and they look at the lamb, and they say, it's either the lamb or my son. And the lamb had to die, friends. No matter how cuddly, no matter how innocent, no matter how gentle, the lamb had to die. Its blood had to be shed. You see, it was either the lamb or the son. And this is what God wants to say to your immortal, never dying soul tonight. It either had to be the lamb of your soul. At this stage tonight, I want to bring you to a different lamb the Lamb of God, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God tonight who was crucified to that old rugged cross at Calvary, the sinless, pure, gentle Lamb of God. 
and it was either God's lamb die, love, or you die and perish in hell. The lamb of God tonight. The lamb, oh, for sinners slain. And on the cross tonight, the lamb of God, the Lord Jesus, Yes, he was crucified. Yes, he suffered. Yes, he bled. Ah, but yes, he died, friends. He died. And it was either his life or ours. You look to the cross tonight, love. Look to the cross tonight, sir, and say, His life for mine. Does it not touch you, unsaved friend, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son? You know, friend, God commanded His love towards us. In that way, we were yet sinners. Christ, the spotless Son of God, Lamb of God, had to die on that old rugged cross that you and I may never perish. You take a good look at the Lamb of God tonight. Behold the Lamb of God with two eyes and see in the Lamb of God tonight the love of God. Do you ever think tonight where you'll be in a hundred years' time? Never mean anything, but none of us will be here in a hundred years' time. In a hundred years' time will you be in heaven. For a hundred years' time will you be in hell. You'll be in one of the two places. You'll not be sitting in Bill Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle, I'll tell you that. Neither will I. And the whole thing is tonight, friends. The plan was the blood of the Lamb that died had to be applied. Here's the crutch. It wasn't enough for the lamb to die. Did you get that? It wasn't enough for the lamb to die. It wasn't enough for the blood to be shed. Listen to me. The blood had to be applied. The lamb has died tonight. His blood has been shed tonight. But that's not enough. You have to apply it. You have to apply it. It's good to know that the Lamb has died. And it's good to know that His blood's been shed. Ah, but you know you've got to apply the blood. You see, that's what God's plan was. God's plan simply detailed was the blood of the Lamb had to be shed. Ah, but the blood had to be applied on the door. Wonder tonight is the blood on the door of your heart to see. Is the blood applied? You know, friends, this evening it was all to do with the blood tonight, nothing else. There's no substitute for the precious blood. There's men hiding behind the day they were baptized. There's people tonight and they're hiding behind the day they were confirmed. And there's people and they're hiding behind this. And they're hiding behind that. And they're hiding behind the other thing. Let me tell you tonight, whatever you're hiding in, when death comes, it's going to put you into hell, I'll tell you. The Lord Jesus, tonight you need to be behind the blood because here's the promise, solely divine, because he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was God's promise. Even though death and destruction was on its way, and this clock on the wall was getting close to midnight, Egypt was engulfed in darkness. The seconds were ticking towards midnight. And death and judgment was coming very soon. 
But the promise wholly divine was this, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Listen, does he see the blood in your heart tonight? The blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. My dear friend tonight, if you're not behind the blood of the Lamb, you'll perish. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to that fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and have sinners plunged beneath its flood, lose all their guilty stains? Have you been to that fountain, dear unsaved friend? Are you under the fountain of good works? Are you under the fountain of our religious rigmarole? Are you under the fountain of some old nonsense? I'll tell you, friend, there's only one fountain tonight. And that's the fountain of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. He says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. But listen to what the Lord says this night. I will pass through the land of Egypt. This night. The Lord gave them a time. That was mercy. The Lord gave them a, t give them a time. This day, three weeks ago. Three weeks. A man I knew well, 51 years of age, Francie Doon, plumber, fit as a fiddle, healthy man, the healthiest man you could have got. was on a cycle, bicycle, cycling from Newry, when all of a sudden he came off the bicycle. I knew Francie well. He was the manager of Glenavy GAA, and many a time I got tea in his house. That was the kind of a man he was, him and Geraldine and the wee family. Come off the bike anyway. And they realized someone was wrong and they've done CPR as they worked on him and the ambulance came and took him to Daisy Hill, but passed away. 51, just like that. I can tell you, God was merciful to these people and giving them time by giving them a time. I'll tell you someone now, you own safe friend, you need to listen to this. God has never given you a time and me a time. We don't know the day of our death. And that's why the Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Your midnight could be on the way home. Could. Your midnight could be before the service even finishes. Because there was a night in the far tabernacle when the congregation got up to sing. The day thou he gave us, Lord, has ended when a brother in the Lord collapsed and died on the floor. If you're to collapse tonight on the floor, tell me, will he see the blood or will he not? Do you see when it comes to this, the orange and the black don't count? Being a Protestant doesn't count. Being a Catholic doesn't count. I'll tell you this, being a Baptist doesn't count. And being a free Presbyterian doesn't count. And being a Church of Ireland doesn't count. And being a Presbyterian doesn't count. And being a Methodist doesn't count. You need to be behind the blood. And very quickly, the pain sorely displayed Every house where the blood was applied, death and destruction didn't come. You read in verse 21, 29, listen to what it says. And it came to pass that at midnight, 
The Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. There was nothing escaped. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians that were in. And there was a great cry. There was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. I wonder tonight, when Pharaoh held his dead firstborn son in his arms, and he saw the warnings that God had told him were real, At that time when he nursed his dead son, I wonder would he wish he could have turned the clock back five minutes. Because let me tell you this, if there had been Egyptians behind the blood that night, they would have been as saved as much as the Israelites. It's all about behind the blood tonight. But let me tell you this, if you're not saved this evening, there's a terrible judgment and there's a terrible destruction awaiting you right now. Death and destruction's on its way for you. Death is on its way for all of us. It's appointed unto men once to die, but thank God tonight I'm behind the blood. I'm depending upon the blood. That's what I'm depending on. The blood of the Lamb. It was a big night in Egypt when death passed by. A big night, you know. A big night to remember because one day death will come to your home as it will mine. But you make sure tonight you're behind the blood when it comes. Because you remember after death is the judgment. For the believer after death it's heaven. Do you want to go to hell, sir? Or do you want to go to heaven, dear? You need to get behind the blood tonight. The lamb has died, the blood has been shed. But you need to apply it. And apply it now before it's forever too late. Time is gliding swiftly by. Death and judgment draweth nigh to the arms of Jesus fly. Be in time. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we pray that as the preacher's voice has fallen silent, we pray that the voice of the Holy Spirit will strive on. And Lord, if any in our meeting tonight are still outside the fold tonight, who are still outside the door, that tonight they'll be wise and apply the blood before the death angel comes. We thank you, Lord, the Lamb has died. The blood has been shed. We pray, Lord, tonight give deciding grace for sinners to apply that blood before it's too late. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.